What you're about to see is not real news. It is satire based on real news. The characters you're about to see are not real-life humans. They are frighteningly realistic puppets based on real-life humans. The views expressed in the show are not necessarily those of Starsat, its sponsors, its advertisers, or the nice lady that makes the coffee. Okay, guys, final rehearsal. Uh, Mr. President, uh, whenever you're ready, sir. So I look at the camera and say, Hello, suckers. <laughs> Sorry, I mean, my dear South Africans, as you know, Human Rights Day is this week when we remember the atrocity of the Shabville massacre and vow never to repeat such a thing again. Quede? No, 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 no. Uh, yes. Uh, I am a bit confused. I know, but it hasn't hurt you so far. No. I mean, uh, can we still commemorate Shabville after, well, uh, you know, the M word? Hey, what M word? The M word that we don't say in this government. Madonzela? No, Marikana. No, 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 no. This is totally different. The protesters at Shopville were shot by racist apartheid police. The protesters at Marikana were shot by democratically elected police. Oh, that's a big relief. No, 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 don't worry. It is totally different. But uh, don't you think we should also say something about Marikana? Do you want a second term? Yes, please, Gwede. Then uh, just read the script, Jacob. Just read the script. <clears throat> Hello, my fellow South Africans. Comrades, Commissars, Commanders-in-Chief, Ladies and Gentlemen, Boys and Girls, welcome to another sizzling hot edition of Puppet Nation, the show where you wear water wings? Safety first, Justice. You can never be too prepared. Yeah, but what are you prepared for? Uh, hello, have you looked outside the studio? Do you know how I got to work today? In a canoe. Yeah, this rain is hectic. I keep expecting Fili and Balula to tell us it's because of Satanism. It's the friggin' Old Testament out there, dude. So if the Val Dam breaks, I've got these babies. And speaking of people desperately trying to stay afloat, we had more testimony in the Oscar Pistorius trial this week. Isn't it amazing how everybody on Twitter and Facebook suddenly is a legal expert? It's ridiculous. People leave the analysis to people trained in law and forensics, like journalists. Uh, except journalists aren't legal experts either. I am. Seriously? Where did you study? On my couch, in front of Boston Legal, CSI, The Good Wife. Please, come on, I know all the terminology. Objection, Your Honour. Move to strike. Badgering the witness. Yeah, no, that seems legit. OK, we've got a big show lined up for you tonight. But first, let's see what's happening in the news. I'll allow it. OK, okay stop now. Overruled. Seriously, stop. Sustained. <laughs> Members of parliament could lose their seats if they are absent for 15 or more consecutive days while the house is in session. So where does that leave someone like Winnie Madikizela Mandela? What do you mean? Well, I can't give you an exact figure, but I'd say Winnie has missed roughly 38,000 days. Yeah, Winnie is a special case. She certainly is. Should we move on? Yes, let's, let's do that. President Jacob Zuma could find himself settled with a hefty tax bill on the 206 million rand upgrade of his Inkanlia private residence. If the state decides that he should pay fringe benefit taxes like an ordinary citizen, he would be facing a bill of millions. President Zuma, are you worried about this latest news? <laughs> what news, Justice? I don't watch the news. I find it too depressing. The news, Mr. President, that you might have to cough up millions in fringe benefit taxes. I don't have a fringe, Deborah, and therefore I get no benefit from it. Bold men are exempt from that particular tax. 
I know the law very well. The public protector's report on Nkandla has been released on Wednesday. Are you worried? Do I look worried? <laughs> no, Justice. All those security upgrades at Nkandla were done by other people without my knowledge. My hands are clean. A swimming pool, a visitor's centre, an amphitheatre, a tuck shop, a cattle crawl. Those were security upgrades? Of course. And it is a fire pool for fires, you know, not for swimming. <laughs> the visitor center is for the security of my visitors. The tuck shop is for food security for my wives. The crawl is for security for my cattle. The Freedom Charter itself says there shall be houses, security and comfort. As a loyal ANC cater, I made sure that I have all three. If you are slept with millions of taxes, where will their money come from? I have plenty of money in the bank. Would that be the Royal Bank of Gupta? Uh-uh, Deborah. Did he, did he just give me the finger? Ah, uh, nah. Just his way of saying goodbye so long and f*** you. Two very familiar faces will no longer be in the cabinet after the upcoming general elections. That's right. Deputy President Khalema Motlante and Planning Minister Trevor Manuel are moving on to greater things. Mr. Motlante, what are your thoughts as you prepare to leave the government you've served in for so long? Uh, 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 we didn't quite catch that. Look, anyway, do you have any idea who is in line to take your position as deputy president? Uh, 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 okay. Uh, Final question. What lies ahead for Khalema Mutlante? Oh, uh, okay. I think he said put it all on number three in the seventh race. That's not what I heard. What did you hear? I heard him say he was going to vote for the economic freedom uh, fighters. <gasps> Me too. Really? You heard him say that? No, man. I mean, me too. I'm going to vote for the EFF. <sighs> God help us all. My fellow Americans, I'd like to take this opportunity to wish all our Americans of Irish descent a very happy St. Patrick's Day. A special day celebrating special culture that has made a huge contribution to this great nation. God bless you all. Wow, St. Patty's Day, huh? Any of you guys ever been to Ireland? Seriously, it's a bog. Literally a bog. And the Irish, Jesus, when they're not drunk, they're fighting. You know, we almost nuked Ireland in 58. True story. We were going to blame it on the Reds. Oh, shit, this thing's still on? Comrades, as you all know, we have decided on almost all our policies. Viva our great leader! Viva! Um, have we? Yes. Um, when did this happen, Chief? Last week, you Mampara. <laughs> hey, Mampara. The manifesto, idiot. You helped us write it. I did? That long list where we said how we were going to nationalize the mines and the banks and pay everybody fairly and give free education and doctors. Oh, that one. I thought that was our Christmas list. I thought we were asking Father Christmas for things. Yes, Father Christmas. Shut up. Anyway, as I was saying, we have sorted out almost all our policies. But there are still some things we have not decided. So, Chief, when are we going to do our Christmas list? Yes, yes, when? when? Leave the Christmas list. We are revolutionaries. We are not doing this just to get things given to us. No, 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 no. So why are we doing this? Shut up! We are talking about finalizing our last few policies. Are there any suggestions? Chief? Don't talk to me about the Christmas list. No, Chief, it's a policy suggestion. Okay, go ahead. I think we should discuss a framework to establish a draft policy on when we are going to discuss our Christmas list. Yes, we have our Christmas list, Christmas list, Christmas list. Christmas list. Any other suggestions? Chief? October. We will discuss it in October. Yeah! Viva, Viva our leader! leader. Viva, 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 Viva the Christmas! Christmas. And if you mention it again before October, I'm going to put fungus in your Christmas stocking.
Why would you join the EFF? <laughs> Julius has invited white people to join the party so long as they don't mind attending land grabbing soirees and nationalization brunches. So I figured, what the hell? Hmm. Now that I think about it, they do tend to welcome obnoxious, self obsessed exhibitionist members. You could probably rise quickly. You're funny. <laughs> but the only thing that's rising quickly right now is the water level and my e tolling bill for me in my canoe. Whoa. Mm, 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 mm. Speaking of bills, uh, let's take an ad break. 47 billion rand. We might be gone for a while. Yeah. And anyway, I have a red beret I bought once in Paris. Okay. Life insurance adverts can happen to anyone at any time. A 42-year-old man driving a 2004 Toyota has a 68% chance of succumbing to a life insurance advert that preys on his insecurities about providing for his family. A 28-year-old woman who drives a 2008 Ford Fiesta has an 82% chance of falling for a car insurance commercial that targets her as a woman by putting all the text in pink and joking about how badly men drive. But what can we do to protect ourselves from insurance adverts? Now you can sleep easy at night with new Insure Insure. Because you never know when insurance ads can happen. But when they do, you'll be insured for sure. St. Patrick's Day. Shit. Don't talk to me about St. Patrick's Day. Them little leprechaun motherfuckers getting all up in your face. They're real dog. They real. People say they're mythical creatures, but I seen them. I'm seeing one right now. Sitting right over there. Taking a shit in my dressing room. No, leprechaun, no. Get on. Stop shitting in my dressing room, bitch. Leprechauns, man. I'm too black for this shit. So, Deborah, how did you deal with uh, not being able to live tweet from court earlier this week? But I did tweet live. I live tweeted about not being able to live tweet. It was some of my best live tweeting to date. I see. So do you think that the testimony was too graphic to be revealed to the public? Oh, come on. You know me. I don't think anything's too graphic. I don't know. I appreciated it. Me, I wouldn't want my children to hear some of those details. No, I, I say let them hear it all. Children have to find out about gun violence and expanding bullets and lethal head wounds and blood spatter analysis and the difference between culpable homicide and premeditated murder and about the dangers of wearing tracksuit pants to tushes at some point, right? I mean, you should stop molly coddling your children. They will grow up becoming inadequate, feeble adults who can't handle anything that life throws at them. Mmm, thanks for the advice. Pleasure. A fallout with Rwanda is being called Pretoria's biggest diplomatic crisis in years. In recent days, the government has expelled three Rwanda diplomats. Rwanda, in turn, threw six of our diplomats out of Kigali. Pretoria accuses the Rwandan embassy staff of involvement in yet another assassination attempt on a former Rwanda army officer. The attacks were made on dissident army chief general Faustin Kayumba Nyamwasa in Johannesburg. Who are you? I am a attaché for cultural affairs in the Rwandan embassy. You seem a bit heavily armed for a diplomat. This is all the rage in the diplomatic corps. Everyone is wearing it this year. Your president, Paul Gagame, seems hell-bent on killing his political enemies wherever they are in the world. These people are wanted in Rwanda. They are terrorists. Your government gives them political asylum. That means South Africa is a terrorist government. Mm, spoken like a true diplomat. What are you going to do? Kill us all? Be careful here. Eh? We are Tootsie. Wasn't that a movie with Dustin Hoffman? And uh, No, Deborah, that was Tootsie. Yes, Tootsie. Uh, you, uh, never mind. ESCOM has warned of further blackouts if the rain continues in Mpumalanga. Okay, so let me get this right. My cousin lives in Musenberg and she gets her electricity cut off because there's a little bit of rain in Vitbank. 
Escom is up the pole. Come on, man. Give us a break. The coal is wet. You're seriously going to keep blaming the rain? We didn't make it rain. You must speak to that Derek Van Damme Oak at ETV. The weatherman? You saying it's his fault? Yeah, of course. He is going around telling everybody it is going to rain. If you say a lie enough times, it becomes true. Didn't Joseph Goebbels say something like that? Yes, the Nazis are behind load shedding. And why not? Six years ago, Alec Irwin blamed blackouts on a saboteur who dropped a bolt into one of the generators. Maybe the saboteur is a Nazi. And he's back. Be afraid, people. Be very afraid. South African taxpayers will have to fork out a whopping 120 million rand for the presidential inauguration in May. Previous inaugurations have cost in the region of 75 million rands. Now the DA has submitted parliamentary questions to Finance Minister Pravin Gordon, demanding that he explain the increased budget. This is one of the reasons I'm getting out of politics. Because of the government's wasteful expenditure? No, because of all these questions from the DA. Not too long ago, you asked the government to cut back on spending. The decision to spend 120 million rand just to inaugurate President Zuma for another term is a bit of a snub to you, isn't it? Snub, schmub. Yes, the cost represents a 60% increase over previous inaugurations, but you need to remember that the presidential bill for spousal support alone has increased by 300% since the time of Mubeki. Are you saying that the bill for the inauguration has gone up because the president has three wives? 10 million rand is being set aside for snacks uh, for the first ladies. The rest goes towards, well, I'm not sure. I haven't actually seen a breakdown of the budget. You've given up, haven't you, Mr. Gordon? They don't listen to me, Justice. I I might as well stay at home and be ignored by my wife. Hello, Ameripublicans, and a happy St. Patrick's Day to you all. Yes, I know the Irish worship the wrong baby Jesus, not like us, who worship the true baby Jesus, but Ireland has always been a friend of the good old U.S. of A. Our southern friends sharing a border with Texas eating tacos. Wait, 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 wait. That's Mexico? Oh, sweet non-denominational pro-guns any abortion Jesus! No one told me those Mexicans were so close. Then where the hell's Ireland? Off the west coast of Wales? But don't Wales kind of swim around all the time? So how do we know where their west coast is? Good evening, South Africa, and well done for having the courage to tune in for another edition of Hard Shot. Tonight, I'm joined by the rotting ancient ruins of white supremacy, Mr. F.W. de Klerk. Uh, I'm only 77, Debra. And I'm not ready to start the interview. Do you mind? Sorry. What was that? I said sorry. I didn't quite hear you. A little louder, please. Sorry. Again? Sorry! There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. They can say sorry. They just don't really feel that they need to. Mr. de Klerk, Frederick Willem, Fricky, you take credit for everything that Excuse is... Excuse me. I'm not comfortable with you calling me Fricky. Well, I'm not comfortable with the 16 years you were in the apartheid cabinet. So why don't we call it a draw? A negotiated settlement. Yes, let bygones be bygones. Vimpy. In 2012, you told the BBC that you had five servants, three of whom were coloured and two who were black. You told them, and I quote, we were one great big family together. Quite right. So do you ask any of your other family members to come over and scrub your toilet and clean your tighty whities First of all, I resent the phrase tighty whities 
Whites have not been tight since 1994. We have been more than generous. How so? Well, for starters, we gave black people the vote. But it wasn't yours to give. Ugh! Magnus warned me this would happen if he, he said, once you unban the commies and the darkies, then next thing it's women in the media. One last question. Any word on the whereabouts of the billions of dollars the apartheid government looted? Deborah, stop right there. You are being incredibly irresponsible. It wasn't billions of dollars. No? No, it was hundreds of billions of rands. Get off my show. A symbol of forgiveness, a reformer, a Nobel Prize winner, a reader of the human condition. That's me, Deborah Patter. Until next time, good night. Wow. F.W. De Klerk, eh? I know. He's such an inspiring guy. I know. He's living proof that all you need to make it in life is the love and support of a white supremacist electorate backed up with a massive military and police force. Then, once you're over a barrel, introduce some basic human reforms that get hailed as a big favor to the people you screwed over. Then negotiate yourself a cushy exit plan, and in the end you can retire in luxury without even having to pay reparations or save jail time. It's a South African dream, Justice. Don't go away. Hello? 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 No, not again! Hello? Hello? Oh, for sake! Frustrated by endlessly dropped calls? With our new deal, you get a phone with a little bag underneath to catch all those dropped calls. So now, you'll never lose one again. And if you believe that, you'll believe anything. Like the way you believe that you'll get reception everywhere. Or like you believe that you're really only being billed per second. And like you believe that you haven't promised us your firstborn child in the contract we made you sign. Call Catcher. Because you believe anything we say. Happy St. Patrick's Day, America. You know what I love? I love those Celtic women who wear those green velvet dresses and sing Danny Boy with their lovely long red hair. I think they're terrific. Who doesn't? But I love everything about Ireland. I love it so much, I'm going to buy it. Dig it up, ship it over here, and put it right in Central Park. It's going to be called Ireland Land. Is that right? Ireland Land? Land Land? Whatever. Charge all the mix five bucks to get in. It's going to be huge. I see that Donald is being touted as a Republican contender for governor of New York. I don't know if I could vote for someone with hair like that. You think he'll be brushed aside? Oh, sweet. Beautiful. You made a joke. Hair today, gone tomorrow. Great. Okay, thanks. Please don't push it. Who knows? Maybe his policies will gel with the voters? Okay, you can stop right now. Unless he just appeals to someone on the fringes of society? You crack yourself up, Justice. Don't make me hurt you. Just as long as you don't do permanent damage. <laughs> okay, that's it. I'm doing the news. Listen, Justice, you can join me oh. or shut up. Justice. <laughs> Permanent. Ha ha ha, hysterical. <laughs> Fringe. <laughs> the Pan Africanist Congress has agreed to form a merger with the Economic Freedom Fighters. The PAC and the EFF will campaign together in the upcoming elections. However, they will contest the elections separately. It's all very confusing. I didn't think the PAC still existed. Of course they do. They're one of the country's oldest political parties. They are even represented in parliament. Really? How many MPs do they have? One. Viva the EFF PAC Alliance! Viva! Mr. Malema, how exactly will the EFF benefit from this merger with the PAC? The PAC has many card carrying members. W really? What? Library cards? Don't come with your white tendencies, Deborah. Revolutionaries do not carry library cards. We ban libraries. Down with libraries! Mr. Malema, Four years ago, the PAC called you a high school dropout, a political buffoon, and a Mickey Mouse pop star. 
Now they're your friends. Did they say anything about my weight? Um, I don't think so. Then it's okay. Last week, some puppet from the ANC Youth League said that people must not join the third one. I was very hurt. If you had been fighting alongside Che Guevara in Cuba, your nickname would have been El Gordo. El Gordo? I like it. El Gordo? What does it mean? It means the fat one. Bastard! Bloody agent! Get out! You get out! Calm down, you two. No, he started it! But, seriously? Does this beret make my palm look big? The poor attendance at Ahang SA's election manifesto launch last weekend has raised questions about the party's future. But I read that Mampela Rampela was insisting that she had a strong support base. If we do not vote differently, we will get more of the past and we will only have ourselves to blame. We must believe that we have the power to change the government into one we can trust. This is our time. We know we will build a winning South Africa together. Oh, hello, guys. I didn't know I was on air. Addressing another election rally? My people love me. They just can't get enough. Listen to them. Is that a tape recorder you've got there? I am Mampela Rampele. How dare you question my integrity? I have principles. I have credibility. I have... You have a broken tape recorder. Okay, so it says here on your form that you're looking for a new line of work. No, 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 no. Don't take me out of context. It's just, well, you see, after the elections, the way the ANC is going, I just worried that sooner or later I'm going to be taken out of context. Right. So what skills do you have? Well, um, spokesman, spokesmodel, mouthpiece, specializing in misdirection and denial. I think I've got the perfect thing for you. So call today for your free, no obligation quote. No cut. We're not offering free quotes. No, 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 no. Now you are deliberately misquoting my statement about quotes. Ah, oh, for fuck's sake. Who the fuck is this guy? For fast instant relief from headaches and fever and TB and cancer. Cut! And... Mac! Jeez, man, you. You can't claim that these flipping things cure cancer. I never claimed that. You have taken what was said out of context. If you look at what I actually said and the proper medical and pharmaceutical context within which... Oh, for fuck's sake. Yeah, <laughs> this is going to be harder than I thought. Um, how are your party planning skills? In what context? Ah. Uh... Owe me a hundred bucks. What? Why? You told me off camera we'd never make it through the news without one of us mentioning Oscar Pristorius. Ha <laughs> ha! What? You just mentioned him. You owe me a hundred bucks. Oh, damn. I think I'm going to throw up. Now you sound just like Oscar. Thank you very much. I object. Justice saved. There you go again. <laughs> Fucking comedian. <laughs>